Tell us another one. Yes, my precious. Tell us. All right, I got you a good one. Whose lack is apparent while the presence is unseen? What is invisible even for eyes wise and keen? What cannot be mended, though the best may try? What are those that dare nature rules to defy? Oh, that's easy, my precious. It's space and time in the rings of power. My Gavan, good afternoon in Sindarin. The Tolkien shirt here. In today's installment of Why Did the Rings of Power Fail, we'll discuss the second reason that I consider to be one of the main ones. That is time and space, or rather, uh, the lack of respect for them. We see several instances of, uh, well, ignoring not just uh, the law, but uh, what was earlier established, and common sense. Such cases would uh, and could uh, be ignored if they were, well, only singular. But there are many of them, so many of them, and uh, all in all they pile up to become one of the reasons why I consider the Rings of Power to be a failure. Let's start with pointing out some inconsistencies with space and distance in the show. Look at this map. It is uh, the map that shows us the distance between Eregion and Moria. It takes one scene for Elrond and Celebrimbor to get from Eregion to Moria, but, well, uh, later we do not get even that. In every other instance where somebody needs to get from bit Lindon or Eregion to Moria, they just appear there, without any mention of long journey. Not even a day, they just appear when they where they need to be. In Moria itself, uh, we are told that the hidden mines of Mithril are placed underneath the lake of Miromir. In the books, uh, for the fellowship, it takes four or three days to get from the west gate of Moria to the east gate, where the lake of Miromir is. But for Elrond, where he is looking for those secret mines, it again takes one scene and, uh, well, he just finds the secret door. We never account for the time it would take to travel such a long distance. In the Southlands, we see the orcs uh, attack the tower and the village, and it takes them night, day, and another night. But for Fio earlier, it, well, again, takes only one thing to go from the tower to the village. I guess it's a case that uh, the road just stretches on for the, for the orcs. Uh, and, uh, well, it becomes shorter for Numenorians because they just appear at the battle plane uh, after, again and again, one scene of galloping through the plains of Mordor. It is, uh, well, impossible to get so quick there, but they just do. And, uh, well, not even not uh, just that, they also manage to build the entire camp, uh, which is well, shown later in the seventh episode. Uh, how did they do that? How did they find time not only join the battle, but also uh, conveniently set up a, a whole camp that will be a place of gathering for all the survivors of Mount Doom eruption? Well, we never know. Speaking about the eruption, we see Elendil and Isildur being together when it starts, but in the next episode the plot needs uh, for them to be separated, so they are of course separated and we never learn how did it happen. 
It is also the case with Galadriel and Theo. They just wander off uh, and are separated for every other person that survived the eruption. They even ignore cries for help and uh, the obvious uh, information that they would have that all people they should look for were in the village. How do they know to go to the Numenorean camp, which the, w they have never seen, uh, we never learn. And of course, there is uh, probably the biggest issue, uh, the issue of the sea, just the sea. There is a reason why it is called Belegar, the Great Sea, but uh, the show <laughs> does not uh, see it that way. It takes one scene for the elves to get from Linden to Valinor. They pass the whole ocean in just one scene. They are not even tired of standing up in the same position. And, uh, well, also it takes uh, Numenorians no time to get from their island to Middle-earth. Look at this map. It is from the show. We ignore the books and uh, the source material. Look at what show presents us. It is such a long distance, but it's never accounted for. And we have to remember that Galadriel decided to cross the ocean by herself without any ship. How did she plan to do that is beyond me. And it is also beyond me how the show treats distance and space. It is nothing that, that it plays no significant role in this show. Now let's look at the issue of time in the show. There is nothing to precisely indicate how much time passes in the show, but uh, we should look at uh, the particular timelines and try to, uh, well, to guess how much time it takes. But on the closer look, it does not make any sense. With the Dwarves and the Elves uh, in Moria and Eregion and Linden timeline, we see the fort being built. I simply cannot believe that it was uh, shorter than a few months to build it. Uh, at the same time, starting counting from the moment where when Galadriel jumped off the ship and uh, Gandalf was falling from the sky, we see uh, that. In Numenor, Galadriel arrives after maybe a day, maybe two. Uh, it is uh, at most a week, and uh, they set out for Middle Earth. They, they teleport, and uh, two, it takes them two days to arrive in the Southlands uh, and take part in the battle. So it is uh, maybe two weeks, at best, three. At the same time, we see uh, the plotline in the Southlands. Uh, the characters see the comet Gandalf falling, and then uh, we start counting. Arondir uh, goes into the tunnel, he's captured one day. Then he, uh, well, fights for freedom and uh, everyone else dies basically, so, uh, another day. He's released another day, third one, and uh, then there are preparations for the battle. Maybe a few days, a week in total, maybe. And then uh, the battle happens. It takes uh, two nights, one day, and... Uh, the Numenorians and Southlands uh, come together 
But uh, there is something that uh, I hoped to clear some matters uh, of time in the show, but see, it made them worse because uh, while the Southlanders are in the Watchtower, Woldrek talks to Theo and tells that the comments fell from the sky a few weeks ago. So, again, the time that passes is at least unclear. <laughs> and, uh, well, we have to notice that uh, during this time, the migration of the hobbits happens. So, uh, all in all, this... I strongly believe that these plotlines were not written to match uh, the time that was presented. They were just written and uh, uh, the creators of the show assumed that, uh, well, we'll just take it for granted that it all makes sense. Well, I do not take it for granted I, and I do not see the logic uh, of the time in this show. Now let's have a look at the bigger picture. At the fact that the whole second age is being concised into just few weeks. In Tolkien's works, uh, the events that are presented in the show, the reign of Tar Palantir, the creation of the rings and uh, the appearance of uh, Anatar or Sauron were separated by centuries. Here they happen at the same time. What is more, there are also events and uh, characters from the Third Age appearing in the show. The Hobbit, Gandalf and uh, the Balrog. It is not the time and place, but they just appear in the show. And uh, there are issues that are not uh, directly connected to the lore, namely the fact that all these strange and meaningful events happen at the same time. The disease that uh, is killing all the elves, the fact that Mithril was found in Misty Mountains, the appearance of Sauron, Adda, Gandalf, the attack of the orcs on the Southlands, and the death of Numenor's king, it all happens not even during a period of a year, but in few weeks. And that's just uh, unbelievable. And uh, another problem is the fact that the show does not devote time to elements that matter. First of all, the Rings of Power. That in the title there are the Rings of Power, but we only spent a few minutes with them. I wish we we have seen the real process of creation, uh, the artistry that is required, the skill and magical power that uh, would be necessary to create such powerful artifacts, but we see no magic connected to them. They are just some rings made of metal. Uh, Mithril, gold, silver and some gems, and that's it. There's nothing special about them. And uh, the show missed so such a great opportunity to present us how they came to be. And there are also other issues I will only name the fact that we do not spend enough time with certain characters. The most apparent issue is the fact that we are supposed to care about uh, those that die, but I dare you to tell the name of the elf that died in the second episode in uh, being the slave of the orcs, or the Isildur's friend that died during the eruption of Mount Doom. Maybe there will be less trouble with naming Sadok. Well, he was 
more of a character, but still, was his death really meaningful? Uh, for me, for Saturn, it was just something that happened. In order to get emotional payoffs of characters dying, you need to spend more time with them, and the show does not do that. So, uh, let's uh, sum up all of this. Uh, let's uh, compare it to uh, the source material. In his works, Tolkien devoted so much effort to uh, establish a consistent storyline. He has uh, the whole calendarium in his, uh, in his books. Uh, in The Lord of the Rings, you can see and trace every single character and see what he or she was doing during any day of these great events that were happening uh, during the War of the Rim. And in the show, <laughs> there is almost precisely the opposite of that. You have no uh, rules that govern the whole project. You just make the events happen anywhere and in any moment that you want and uh, the audience is supposed to accept it. But for me it is just another element that makes this show a failure. Now, I certainly have not discussed every uh, single element that was defying space and time in the Rings of Power. What such uh, instances have you noticed? Please comment down below. And uh, now I have to thank you for listening. I thank every new viewer, every new subscriber, everyone that liked and uh, commented on the previous and this video. I hope to see you again very soon. Fare you well. Nova year. Subscribe right now, you little hobbitses.